Welcome again this evening. We're happy to be here with you again as we will be diving into our third topic for, or the first third message of this weekend. And this evening, we uh, thought we would share a little bit personally from our own story, our own love story. Uh, throughout this weekend, we have been looking at a, team, uh, a theme or the topic called Loved to Love. And we have been looking at the amazing love that God has for us and that he actually wants us to be dependent only on his love so that we can actually be agents of love towards others without any expectations back. The amazing kind of love that only God can give. And it is, it's really amazing. And, and he wants to help us to connect with that. He, he gave us his spirit. He has made provision so that he himself, Christ himself, could live in us. Really amazing. That's what we looked at yesterday, or rather um, this morning, about how Christ would live in us. So we looked first, the most important thing, that was love and God's love for us. And then we looked at how Christ wants to live in us and have effect on others around us. Um, and now this evening, we will look a little bit more into how the Lord, how God has knit us together in love. How we, we have our texts in Colossians 2.2 that, that is that centerpiece of knitting together, which we also put into our, our glove and, and was our wedding text as well because we feel that, that it was God that knit us together and we would like to share a little bit of that story together with you. But before we go into that, I'd like to, us to stand up and have a word of prayer together. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we can again come to you who are the most powerful, the Almighty, and have everything in your hands. I want to thank you so much for the plan that you have to get us out of this world and to, to get rid of all sin and suffering. And oh, we look forward to that day and we, we know it is soon that you will soon come. Yeah. Father, we, we want to thank you also for the gift of your spirit and, and thank you that we can invite him now to be with us as we share a little bit of the, the experience, a little bit of the, the way that you have led in our lives. And Father, we pray that that, that could have um, yeah, some blessing on, on some people that can listen and hear this, these, uh, this experience and that it would draw them closer to you. Father, we thank you for that, that amazing gift of your spirit and, and want to thank you also for the work that you will be doing in our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name, amen. So, this evening we will be sharing our, you could say life story, not life story, our love story rather, uh, in seven different stages um, where how the Lord has led us and how we have seen his guidance in our lives. And obviously the first stage of that life together was individual, <laughs> was actually not together, right? So that was the personal preparation. And um, yeah, we thought we could share just shortly how the Lord has led us to see him as our savior um, and, and that we have committed our lives into his hand. Um, so that was, for me, uh, first, first of all, I grew up in a Christian home. I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, but I went through a, a, a time in my life where it became all a little bit, I, how do I say, unsure, and, and things were shaken, and I thought that was, and I think actually looking back that that was quite good because the, the question to me was what is really true and growing up here in, in post-Christian Europe the question of does God really exist and, and these fundamental issues does, is the Bible really trustworthy um, you know all these, these fundamental questions that I had in a way had assumed through my childhood as a Christian 
came up in school, in science class and so forth, and, it, and was challenged. And I, I was thinking, huh, how is this? And, and I'm, I'm amazed, actually, on that journey in my teenager years, how the Lord le- helped me to explore this question. And I have found amazing answers to the, the question of, does God really exist? And also, is the Bible really true? And also, what religion really is, is um, trustworthy or actually the, a revelation from God? And, and then also the, the last question of what does it mean to be a real disciple? So that's how, in a way, in my teenage years, in a nutshell, the Lord has helped me to, to choose to live a life together with, with God, which I'm very thankful for. How was the story for you? How was the, the, your journey? Yeah. Oop. There we go. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, by the way, I just want to thank the technician team up there. They have a not-so-thankful job to do always when things are not going right, then everybody knows. Otherwise, uh, yeah, it's a bit difficult and a challenge, but thank you guys. You're doing a great job. Amen. Um, yeah, for me... I kind of grew up in a Christian home, but not really that we practiced faith um, in our daily life. So for me, I didn't know about God or Jesus, but I, from my childhood on, I, I believed in something higher, in a, in a higher being or power. And uh, through young people, young Adventists like you guys, I actually got to know about this amazing God and how I also shared a little bit yesterday um, experiencing and understanding about this amazing God and this amazing love Jesus represents um, and experiencing the healing in my heart and in our um, family. That was uh, uh, an amazing miracle I saw only God can do. And yeah, also comparing all the different religions and uh, going from yeah into different churches and uh, seeing that whether it's the hinduism the buddhism or uh, then christianity nothing could compete with this christ this christ who also provokes us not only to live a better life but who actually provokes us to love our enemy that was something i couldn't find in all the other religions where i thought that's mind-blowing that's so different. And yeah, that was my beginning, my journey with God. Hmm. Yeah, and then we were each in our own little sphere working for God in, in many different ways and actually crossed paths at one point in 2012. Um, that was the first time when we went to visit from Matheson Mission School to visit Josiah Mission School where Diana was a student at the time, and, and I was a worker here at Madison, and, and I, we were interested in learning more about the different mission schools. And, and lo and behold, Diana was there together with Flory, and they were on a free weekend and had some time to show us around. And uh, that was very encouraging. Um, but hey, this was not, not anything more than that. Um, but it was, it was our first meeting there in February 2012, right? Uh, even though, just to add, uh, we weren't more interested in each other, but uh, it was still impressive for me to see Jeremy because he was uh, 23 by that time and already a school director at Matheson, where I thought that's pretty inspiring to see such a young person in uh, such a position, so what God can actually do in our lives. Yeah, and then the same spring after that, um, Josiah Mission School decided to come and spend a week up at Matheson and brought their students with them, which was also very nice. So here they were visiting in 2012 um, the, the school. And um, yeah, you can see there's our living room at Matheson. And uh, if you look very closely, you'll notice that there's two people there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to ignore her, actually. No, no. Um, we're. <laughs> Yeah, we were not, not uh, particularly interested uh, to, to try to start anything, but, but at least we, our paths crossed, and we were, um, yeah, it was nice. 
Um, then we met at different events like, like uh, ASI, uh, Impact Scandinavia conference there. Um, yeah, and, and just informally, we're ministering in our own ways, in our own um, areas, and concentrated on God's work. And I think that's a, a very important personal preparation, you could say, for doing anything else when it comes to relationships. So, yeah, we were ministering for quite some years, actually. Um, and then in 2015, something happened here. Yeah, that would be the next stage, you could say, where the question of courtship or relationships became more in our, into our minds and we were starting to think, oh, I wonder if there is anybody that God has out there that we could minister together with or that I could minister together with and the same from her side. Um, and so then in 2015, we, had the, we were at the GC session. Um, yeah, and at the GC session, again, we were just informally, you know, at the same event, coincidentally. Um, turns out that we actually had lunch together at some point in a group of like 10 people. But, but uh, I don't know exactly, I don't remember. But somehow it was like she shared her own testimony in that group, or in, I don't know if I was asking. Yeah, I was asking. It's good, good to get this refreshed here. Uh, asking about it, you know, how how did it? Because I think I heard that that she didn't grow up as a Christian in in the in that uh, way that I had experienced, and I was curious. And and that was very impressing the the story how the Lord had led her, and and uh, so we had a conversation and talked about how. We were, I was ministering and she was ministering in different ways and it caught my attention. Yeah, and I, through that, actually ended up in a dilemma, I would call it, um, because I, I noticed his interest and then sharing my story, uh, I, was, I was not feeling so, so free not to actually, yeah, um, like to add more interest to say like that. Um, but he asked, and then people in the group encouraged me to share, and so, of course, you share your testimony, right? And uh, so I did, but the dilemma I found myself in was that even though Jeremy was always uh, very interesting and also some, somewhat inspiring to me since I met him, um, at that time, since he was up in Norway and I was in Germany and our, um, yeah, we'd, our ways didn't cross often, um, hardly ever, actually, um, and yeah, at that time, I was interested in somebody else. And yeah, that was not that there, there was really a story or anything uh, going on. It was more in my mind that I thought of somebody else. And um, yeah, then after the GC session, maybe you can continue. Yeah, I, I didn't know about this, right? So I just thought, hey, I don't know. Is it, is it possible somehow to keep contact, right? Uh, and some of these, uh, some of the ladies there also were interested in some documents I had access to at the GC session because I was a delegate there, and and so I got I received their emails, and I sent them those documents. And lo and behold, she says thank you, and I continued the conversation for two or three times. Be the third time around, uh, I noticed actually, and it wasn't very informal, but I noticed that um, she writes in a way that makes it clear to me that she would prefer not to continue um, our dialogue. Um, yes. <laughs> and, uh, ah, and I thought, yeah, that's too bad. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I thought that was very attractive also because, because she was <laughs> yeah, keeping herself very um, pure, you could say, and, and didn't just dialogue with anybody um, like that and and um, so I was there understanding that and realized that yeah, I just have to not communicate <laughs> and for me it was uh, a little bit difficult because it was a temptation to stay in contact with him right but for me it was very important to to be honest before God first of all and also before him um, if I'm interested even though maybe it's just in my mind and somebody else but I wanted to to have a clear line where, where I go and what I do. And that's why it was clear for me, okay, first I need to clarify that, and then I can see if there, yeah, is anybody and maybe something with us. Yeah, 
and that opportunity didn't just come around so quickly again. So it was 2015 and then, yeah, quite some time actually before things developed more. So what was the next thing? Yeah, maybe before I go into that, I, that other uh, interest got clarified actually quite, quite quickly. And then I also thought, man, that was too bad. But um, looking back now, we saw that it was also like God's timing, the way how he led us. Yeah, and I remember also in my email back, I also was, was quite, uh, or at least I, I actually don't think I, I wrote all of these things, but in my thoughts I was thinking, hey, you know, we still have our focus or in ministry and we should be focused on that and, and that's good. Um, but at least for me it clarified and I said, okay, let, let me just focus here. Um, and then, um, yeah, a couple years later or so, both of us had other relationships with somebody else or like, yeah, and, and um, had these different courtships and, and gathered a lot of, I think, valuable experiences. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the relationships we had was uh, very valuable and many things to learn from and which we are also thankful for, for that. And still, for me, um, breaking up that previous relationship was quite difficult and emotionally not easy <laughs> to say like that because uh, also looking back I, I noticed and realized and especially after this experience with Jeremy um, that I was way too much caught into that relationship when it comes to my emotions and that was a very very good and important thing also for me to learn and then um, New Year 2017-18 I flew to India with my friend, Flori, here in the picture. And that was a very good trip to, yeah, to spend some time together and to visit my dad, because my dad lives in India and his family, and my half-siblings and uh, his wife. So that was very nice to see them again. But it was still the time where I, I struggled a lot about this previous relationship and the whole story I had many questions and things I didn't understand. And in that time, it was very amazing for me to see and experience God speaking to my heart. And I remember it was New Year's night, so it was midnight, New Year, and we decided to drive to the, to the village or place where my dad grew up which is out in the boonies, in the middle, midst of nowhere, uh, in India, in Punjab. And it was only quietness and silence, New Year's night. You couldn't hear and see any fireworks, it was just silence. And that was exactly what I needed at that New Year's night. And everybody went to bed and fell asleep, and I, midnight, took time with my Lord, because I saw that my heart needed some quiet time some time with my source of love, with God. And talking to him and reflecting on that whole story and everything that has happened and not really understanding and having many questions, I just told the Lord, I'll give everything into your hands and now we're starting a new year. I just uh, want to ask you if you want to tell, tell me something about that topic when it comes to relationships. Um, since I had so many questions and said if not that's also okay but if you want to tell me something I, I would love to hear something from you through your word and that was my prayer and then I, I opened my Bible and I continued to read um, where I stopped in the morning in my morning devotion and what I read this night I found so interesting <laughs> I read the story um, about, um, or it was the context of um, Saul and the prophet Samuel, where Saul, as a previous king, got rejected from God, right? Because he sinned and he rejected God himself. And Saul, uh, Samuel, was the one um, who was crying a lot about Saul, because Samuel, the prophet who anointed Saul, um, had, like, had a very close relationship, like a father-son relationship, right? 
And seeing and experiencing all that was so painful for the prophet Samuel that he cried a lot. And I cried and mourned a lot as well. <laughs> and when I opened my Bible and started to read, it was 1 Samuel 16, the story. And it in the beginning, in verse 1, it starts where, it's at, where the Lord himself starts to speak to Samuel. And I found it interesting that the Lord himself is speaking here after my prayer. And he says to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from resigning over Israel? And fill your horn with oil and go. For I have provided myself a king among his sons. And for me, that was very interesting. A person I could also identify myself with, mourning and crying and crying out to God. And the Lord, who is gracious and answers and tells him, or asks him actually, a question back. Why do you mourn? I already chose another king for you. So keep calm and relax. And this king, we all know, was, the, was King David that the Lord chose. And for me, just reading that and experiencing that after my prayer, I had peace in my heart. And I knew whatever will come in the future, I have no clue and I have no idea. But I know the Lord is in control. Yes. Yeah, and then uh, that was New Year, 2017-18. And then in the summer, actually, I remember it was that, that I was again, this was after I had um, also... Um, been actually out of a relationship for more than a year again and and uh, I was thinking hmm, I wonder does the Lord have anybody out there as well that he would like me to minister together with and my thoughts also went back to Diana and I thought yeah but how should I contact her I mean like I can't write her an email right like that yeah so yeah so I did did uh, look a little bit into it but and 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 prayed but i didn't really get further then and then i went yeah and and yeah went into whatever kind of like didn't didn't really focus very well i think in the and and but it went over until i noticed that oi she signed up for ASI. And I thought, why is she coming to ASI Scandinavia? Yeah. <laughs> um, so during that year after, like the, the summer and the, the year 2018 was also a special year for me because the Lord also brought my thoughts back to Jeremy even though I have, haven't thought about him at all around this time. But I was praying. I had my morning devotion as usual, and I was praying, and suddenly in my prayers, sometimes I, I just keep silence or don't talk in my prayer to see if the Lord wants to impress me with something or wants to tell me something or helps me to realize something I have done. And, and suddenly I realize during my prayer time that actually that year, 2015, I was not even willing to ask the Lord about Jeremy. Um, I was distracted in my mind with somebody else, um, but I was not even praying about him when he was kind of approaching me or texting me and asking for some more information. I was pretty clear and said that there was uh, a clear boundary here. And for me, of course, as a Christian, I, I do want to know, do want to do what the Lord wants me to do, right? And realizing that I was not even willing to ask the Lord was like a slap in the face <laughs> for me. And where I, I thought about this and confessed it and brought it to the Lord in prayer and uh, apologized also and just prayed about it if, um, yeah about whatever the Lord had in store, or maybe has in store. And so, of course, I got a little bit curious about 
this realization and I um, started to pray for Jeremy specifically and actually asked the Lord many, many questions about him and about relationships. And, um, but I pretty soon also realized that I, I need to surrender that thought also about him because at this time I had no clue about Jeremy, where he is or what he's actually doing, if he's actually in a relationship or interested in somebody else. So I had no clue and we girls are very good in building our own castles in our minds, right? And so I realized, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna go there. I shouldn't go there. So I better surrender and um, yeah, be willing to be led by, by God, but, but to surrender. And that's what I did and praise the Lord. He helped me to, to do that. And <laughs> I surrendered it and it was interesting and funny because after I, I surrendered it, I went to a youth uh, conference in Germany and then a friend came to me uh, who was also a student with me at the mission school. And she, she came to me, ran to me and she asked, yeah, Diana, you know, I really wanna go to the um, ASI Scandinavia, like New Year. Wouldn't you wanna come with me? And I knew that at this time, Jeremy was ASI Scandinavian president and that he will be there. And with this background, I just told her, you know, um, I'll pray about it and come back to you. And so I actually took three months of prayer <laughs> and asking the Lord whether he wants me to go or not, because I really didn't want to do a mis another mistake, I felt like. And so I took enough time to consider that. And I kind of didn't want to go because I was afraid about myself to just go out of my own interest for him. And uh, I really, I only wanted to, do, wanted to do what God wants me to do. And this is a tricky thing when it comes to our heart, right? And yeah, then I also had my prayer time and I was silent again. And suddenly I, re I realized or God helped me to realize and kind of told me, when I created, created not only Adam, but also Eve, how was it? Wasn't it that I brought Eve to Adam? And I was like starting to discuss and debate with God, <laughs> and not really um, yeah, trying to argue against it, but I realized, okay, this is, this is true. God was the one who brought Eve to Adam, or who presented Eve to Adam. And with our background and our conversations, I also realized, okay, I, I probably should be, or should show some kind of an openness if the Lord has a plan, and if he actually wants to give us a second chance. Yeah, and I was looking through the, the participants list, and I, we were looking for actually a, a workshop speaker because we had a cancellation. And I actually thought, no, oh, I'm sure Diana could do something when it comes to that category of, of um, uh, workshop. But I thought, oh, is she really a writer? So I was actually in, in uh, doubt again and just postponed it and we went to the conference. And then, um, yeah, turns, turns out that we get to have an opportunity to be at outreach together. Yeah, somehow happened uh, like that. Yeah, and, uh, and she was in the same car, and uh, I just asked the open question, you know, could anybody do a workshop on this, uh, in this category uh, theme? And I also asked specifically uh, Diana, and then there was uh, discussions and different things, and, and uh, turns out she prayed about it and, and uh, was willing. And that was great. I was really thankful for that. Yeah, it was an interesting experience for me because I, I knew, okay, I'll go there and I'll have no responsibilities at a conference and I can just relax and enjoy. And, and it also was a little bit like this until Jeremy came with this question. And then, <clears throat> as I'm used to do, I say, okay, I'll pray about it and then I'll, I'll give you an answer. And so, um, yeah. Did I, oops. Yeah, 
one more. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I decided to go for it and to to share um, what the Lord put on my heart for that workshop, and what that was also a little bit what I shared yesterday about the story of my father and uh, how I actually found healing uh, through Christ. Yeah, and that actually was a, a very um, important thing, actually, detail also for me, because I, I was unsure. That one of the things in my personal preparation, or you could say in the exploration, is to find out, okay, what is the person's background? Could they actually fit together with me to minister, right? And one of the questions I had is, what is her family background? And, and how, is, how is her constellation when it comes to that and her childhood? And, you know, how is, what is her backpack like, basically, right? It's good to know. Um, and and um, that's actually an area that I had questions about. And um, I was also participating in the workshop, uh, the only workshop I did go to as well. And, uh, and it was very nice to hear also that... Um, experience because it really uh, showed me how she had worked through that relationship with her father, um, which I think is very Im important to have a, a good relationship to parents. Um, and so that was, for me, a, a great indicator um, that, hey, the, the main question, or the, that was the last, you could say, main question in my mind when it, comes to, when it came to her, fell. And that was uh, on New Year's Eve uh, also. And this was a picture of New Year's Eve. And uh, if you look closely here, again, you will notice that there's uh, two individuals on that picture. Can you see them? Yeah. And uh, I just actually found out here. I don't know if you want to share that. Yeah. I, at that moment, looked at him because with the, the past history, you can say, uh, for me, it was a clear calling from the Lord to go to ASI and to show a certain openness. I didn't do anything. I didn't talk or approach him. Um, yeah, and this is actually also amazing to me that, you know, even though with all this background from her side, that she was so still reserved. She didn't, she didn't, um, was not forward in any way or kind of seeking me out or kind of in, in, in that way, but still showed a, a general you could say openness. You didn't reject me, um, and and I I felt a little bit that openness, and and therefore also you could say mustered the courage to approach her again. And now this time not by email, but uh, after New Year, uh, asked her if she would like to go for a walk with me, um, and and um, yeah, she she accepted that, and we went on a walk, and I shared with her my burden on my heart that I, I was wondering whether she would want to get to know me better and if she would allow me to get to know her better. Um, yeah. And I was very happy at her response, which was... <laughs> I'd like to. I'd like to. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just said, yes, I'd like to. <laughs> I just talked about it today, like thinking back at the different responses, and this was the, the first one. Yes, I'd like to, which was really nice also for me, and it gave me a, some kind of indication that this was not totally new to her, because she answered right away. I actually offered if she, you know, you can think about it, pray about it, you know, like, but she's like, yeah, I'd like to, and that was also very nice. Um, yeah, and then we, we went into this, you could say, next stage, and here I actually wanted to also share one quote that I think is a very helpful in this, in this regard, three questions will, that, that are key questions that one can ask oneself before entering a relationship. And that is, will this union help me heavenward? Will it increase my love for God? And will it enlarge my sphere of usefulness in this life? If these reflections present no drawback, then in the fear of God, move forward. So I think these three questions are very helpful in this process as well because you want to be more effective in ministry together than by yourself. So, and if, you, if your partnership doesn't draw you closer to God but draws you away, it's a no-go. Don't go for it. So, so I think this is a, a very, very nice thing. And so that brought us into our 
informal courtship stage. And we called it this informal courtship because we thought, oh, let's not just post it on Facebook and everybody knows it, um, but rather let us have a, a, a time because we don't know each other very well, right? I mean, we had some, I mean, you, you heard some of the, the contact we have had, but, but let's just, and it was actually a suggestion from her side, let's have two or three questions um, every day uh, and on email and, and uh, ask each other and, or answer and, and uh, yeah, just questions that are on our mind. Uh, two or three questions was a bit much, uh, so it, was, it wasn't, uh, we weren't that effective or efficient in it, but uh, we did um, do, I don't know, two or three every three days or so. Um, for the first 30 days was the suggestion and turned it out to be about, yeah, one and a half months of finding out is there any non-negotiables because if, if, the, if, if we're not really compatible if we through those questions, let's not continue. And at any, any stage, right, we want to find out, hey, does this courtship, does this relationship, could it result in marriage? Could we effectively minister together? Are we compatible, right? The, and these questions, and at any stage, we need to be open and, and able with our minds to say no. It's not, let's move back and let's separate. And that is also a successful direction in a relationship. So it's not just forward that is the, the goal, right? The goal is to go find the right person, not just any person, right? So I think this is a, a very nice thing. This was the first um, time we, I met her, 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 no, no, it wasn't the first time I met her, but the first time I, I visited after we started the informal courtship, I had met her mother already before, which also also very nice um, experience. I, I asked some questions. Yeah, oh. It was already 2015 when my mom also met Jeremy and she liked him very much from the very beginning and couldn't understand why she couldn't and he couldn't convince me. Yeah, yeah um, I, I noticed that she was positive also. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was, that was nice. Um, yeah, and then after those six weeks, we, I, I decided, yeah, I would like to ask her for an official courtship. Um, and, and that's, we did. And we were, had a, a nice time here. You can share. It was very sweet. Um, it was in Switzerland at uh, his sister's place. And it was in winter time, winter time as you see. And uh, his sister and uh, nieces and nephew and uh, they, they prepared and built two igloos, actually, for that occasion. And uh, then he led me into that igloo and um, had a, like, a poem, wrote a poem for me when, where he in the end asked me if I want to be his uh, official girlfriend. And what did you answer then? <laughs> and I said, yes, I'd be privileged. Ah, a privilege. That was really nice. So I really liked her answer. So that was, that was a nice uh, experience. Um, yeah, so then we had courtship life, you could say, where we now officially said, okay, we're a couple and, and also uh, let people know about that. And then, yeah. Those were my first flowers I got from Jeremy. That was yeah. very sweet and nice. I thought it was magnolia. Uh, I thought it was her favorite flower. <laughs> so, but it turned out uh, actually... It's the mini magnolia. The mini magnolia, exactly. It's an al al so, yeah, it was, it was very cute because it, it was like somebody said, hey, hey, I think those are magnolia. And, and I was like, magnolia? I've never heard the word before until she, in those emails, you know, the, remember the, the first 30 days, you know? She wrote, uh, I don't know how we got that, but somehow, the, what's your favorite flower? I don't know, maybe I asked it? Oh, it's a good question. Um, and I had never heard magnolia in my life. Like, I didn't, and, and suddenly it's like, randomly, there's like, hey, there's magnolia. And, and uh, I'm like, whoa, really? And so we gathered them and, and uh, gave, them, gave them to, to her. Yeah, it was very cute. Anyway, those were almond, almond flowers, flowers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice also. <laughs> the right yeah. colors. Yeah, and then we went to visit our families. Uh, also, there's my brother and, and uh, sister-in-law. And yeah, just hiked on mountains, right, as we heard this morning also in Switzerland. Yeah, what was this? Yeah, I, I learned and actually Jeremy's mom taught me how to cut hair. And 
Yeah, that was a, a great uh, plus point on her side. She, she was very teachable and very good learner, and my mom liked that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and then we went to weddings. That was mother's wedding, her mother's wedding, and and also Larissa and Andre, and we're ministering together. She made the cakes there, very nice cakes. Recommend that. And then her sister's wedding was also the year after Doris. Very nice, and there you can see the whole family on her side as well. And then we visited in summer 2019 the, the Indian clan, uh, the Indian part of her family in the States. And that's also very nice because her family is in Washington. Uh, her Indian, most of her Indian family is in Washington, and my American family is in uh, Oregon, which is very close. And so we uh, managed to, to visit our families, and this was at my great aunt's place. She has a ranch, which was really nice. My grandparents, Grandma May and, um, and Grandma, uh, Grandpa Roy, yeah, very nice. And then here's my uncle, and they gave the motorcycle to try that out. Yeah, taking pictures. Went to San Francisco, that's where the cheapest flights went out, so we booked the flight from there. <laughs> And we went to Portugal, to GYC. Um, yeah, and this is Vita Salus, the health center there, which also was very nice. And then, finally, she came to Norway with her mom, which was also very nice um, for yeah, some, day, some days. And we even went, and one of our goals for 2019, in the beginning we said, what are your goals for 2019, right? And one of them was to run a half marathon. And amazing, her, her mom joined us and ran a half marathon. Can you imagine? So all the way from Tremborg here to Müssen up to the fourth and back. So that was, was a fun experience. It was really rainy, pouring. And visiting Daniel and Sylvia and they having um, devotions with their children was very inspiring also. Yeah, and then we went on, on Bess again. Yeah. Very beautiful nature. Yeah, and uh, in this phase, or yeah, in this courtship phase, uh, one of the things that was very important to us, and, and we realized this is, uh, um, yeah, important is this, these three steps of intimacy. Maybe you can share a little bit. Yeah, we, we shared a little bit with the students already about these three steps, and it was also very interesting and nice for me, especially, as a lady to, to experience that. Um, where it comes to the spiritual intimacy, the emotional intimacy, and also the physical intimacy. Um, and the word turns these steps of intimacy upside down, right? It starts with the physical and emotionally, get caught up in the emotional, and then maybe, uh, maybe not the spiritual um, intimacy as well. And so we, we realized, okay, that should be the other way around, of course, uh, especially with the um, advices uh, from scripture and we started um, on the spiritual on the spiritual level and uh, studied Adventist home together and and read many things uh, about um, yeah books and the Bible um, when it comes to courtship and exploring and getting to know the foundational principles about courtship and marriage and yeah the purposes for it ministering together and that was our whole focus, actually, until engagement, um, which was also a quite, yeah, new experience for me to specifically hold the emotions back also, to first really focus um, with our intellect on, on our relationship and what Jeremy said earlier on to to explore whether it's God's will for us to move forward or not, whether to stay together, whether we will be a capable team to be a better team together in ministry or not, or maybe better to separate. Yeah, and that was important for me in a way also to, to keep her as pure as I could, as a, like a flower that is, is so, you could say, um, yeah, you have to handle the flowers gently, right? 
and you have to be careful not to damage them, right? When you drive a car, right, and learn you to put it on your lap, don't put it in the back, you know, kind of, these kind of things, and make sure that you treat them as gently as possible, and, and so in this phase, you know, love is always a risk, and you're always going to have some kind of attachment, but as much as possible, I wanted us to find out if we were com compatible without defiling her, if that's a word, to, to not um, take anything from her. So I was, we, and we were also um, careful not to, to have, especially the, the physical intimacy, even didn't hold hands actually for, yeah, very long time up to almost engagement uh, as well. And just didn't want to make that go in our way. Um, of of uh, taking from each other what we actually would like to to leave to whoever will marry that person, right? Because we don't know if it will work out or not. I mean, we 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 hope so, right? But we we don't know. And so, also emotional attachment it was also something that that we didn't want to to uh, do fully, or we didn't want to go fully in before we had a certain also commitment to each other more than just boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, so, so I think that was, that was a, a, a great phase where we got to know each other very well also, um, but not all maybe the deep emotional things just yet. But we found out enough to know that we had the tools to work with any of those kind of things that would come up potentially. So then, Finally, we got into the engagement phase, and this was an exciting time. Um, also, I would, say, I would say, yeah, what is happening here? Yeah, that was uh, very special, as everybody can imagine. And it started all at his sister's place. Uh, we went to Sanmat, to the Life Center they're leading there, and it was on a Sabbath on the 24th of December, the uh, 21st of December. Um, 2019 and yeah we the kids came and started to to read some poems to me after lunch and I realized okay something is going on um, and and then the content of the poem was I need to to look around uh, in the house and find a present and they will lead me with hot and cold and so I went around the whole house and then finally found the first present, which was a very nice, warm Norwegian pullover. And uh, then, yeah, it was pretty amazing how, how I was led through that whole journey with the uh, poems Jeremy wrote. Uh, and each step was like a poem, showed me each next step what to do actually and how to go about it. And uh, the next uh, poem was to take, take on the pullover and to uh, keep warm and get ready to go and to, to follow the, the eyes of my prince. That was the um, yeah, suggestion of uh, his parents, uh, written in the form of a poem. And so I did. And that was exciting because I obviously knew, okay, something is going on. I don't know what exactly and how long it will happen, but something is happening. And uh, then I, I followed the eyes of my prince and I saw that he was looking on the way somewhere. And uh, so I knew something was hidden there and I found a couple more presents. And this was the first present here, which I found. And the first present I found was this beautiful glove which, uh, yeah, you already saw this morning, the big one, which I didn't see yet. I just saw the small glove and with a special message written on the thumb. And I don't know if you can see that. It's in C-O-L-2. C-O-L? Colossians 2, that's right. So that was the, the hidden message for me, or something to figure out what Colossians 2 is all about. And 
So I looked up in my Bible. I, I didn't know by heart was what was written at, in Colossians 2 by that time and figured out, okay, this is talking about people who are knit together in love. And then I found the second present following his eyes and the second present was this beautiful glove. And something special about this glove was that the thumb was wrapped up like this, so I was not allowed to see the special, special mes message on that thumb yet. And, and I thought, wow, those are beautiful gloves. And, and I wondered where he, he got these gloves from and with these special messages. And yeah, so, so we, we talked about it and I, I figured out that this amazing man is so talented, has so many hidden talent, talents which I don't know of yet and that he actually knitted himself. Um, yeah, that was quite impressive. I never did something like that myself. Um, yeah, that was really nice. Very personal, very, very nice. And then the next present, which was, uh, that's the, no, that's the third present, eh? yeah. So the third present was, oh, was this glove, right? Yeah was the, the big glove you see here and where I then had to figure out the, the different um, what the letters, letters yeah, right. Um, and then I saw, as you already shared this morning, that the letters are that our hearts may be knit together in love. And then a J and a D for Jeremy and Diana. So that was very, very sweet and nice to have also a spiritual element in the whole story. But the journey continued. And oops, then I also had to climb up this whatever <laughs> and had to get down um, a bag with uh, some more presents and things. Um, and there was a hot carob chocolate and a blanket because it was a bit chilly and cold. And yeah, that was nice. And I. Yeah, one of the most important presents, or the, the most important present, I would say, was this one you see here on, this, on the screen, which was the poem, where he then wrote, uh, read to me, and in the end also kneeled down and asked me whether I want to marry him. And what did you say? <laughs> this time I said, yes, I'd love to. Aww. <laughs> so cute. Oh, so nice. Yeah. I was very happy for that answer too. <laughs> yeah, it was as uh, Jeremy earlier on shared, very special the way how he led our whole relationship. I felt, as you can imagine, especially the girls maybe, felt very well taken care of, very gently being, yeah, like getting to know each other in a very careful way, um, feeling well respected and very safe. And yeah, after saying, yes, I'd love to, I was allowed to open the thumb finally. And so I opened the thumb and I think this message everybody can read. It was I love you. And what was special about that was that I heard that the first time from him at our engagement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also holding hands was then something kind of officially we uh, also felt free to increase also in the yeah, physical area. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and here we have some, some pictures and this was also amazing, just like we had, I looked at the weather forecast and, and, it, and it was all cloudy and so forth, and, and, but that's where, there was a little slight chance that it might work. And, and uh, you, if you see, maybe you don't see so much, but you, there you see quite, quite some clouds and was, everything was cloudy and every, like, and I thought, okay, well, that's, this is how it's gonna be. But then when, uh, just as she had answered, after she answered, everything lifted and, and you can see these beautiful pictures. You could see all the, the mountains 
and just a, a present from from God. Yeah, so that was that was really nice, and we got some rings too. Yeah. So. Also made by this amazing man himself. Mm. Yeah, so then, yeah, we had engagement time. Engagement time was also a, a great, great blessing where we now were really interested in, I mean, connecting emotionally um, and, and going to the deep, deep things and preparing to unite our lives. It's no longer the question, uh, like, and it's, it's special when suddenly, when you're no longer wondering, will I marry this person? But you're preparing to get married to this person. And, and like the whole emotional connection and, and, and process, yeah, was, was very different and very special also. Um, yeah, increasing connection. But we were still uh, somewhat distant from each other because I was in Norway and she was in Germany also. Um, and then Corona happened, and praise the Lord, she could come up for a month. So <laughs> it was a blessing in, in disguise for us a little bit, at least uh, in that regard. So... Yeah, and then, then uh, finally, um, on the 23rd of July, we had our civil wedding, which we, yeah, this is now stage six. We added stage six so that we had seven stages, right? So <laughs> here we have a, uh, anyway, civil wedding wasn't, wasn't anything, um, how do you say, extra. Add that, and you can, can go online on, on uh, our webpage, jeremydiana.com, and you can see, actually, the wedding ceremony on there. And, and it's, uh, I think it was a special blessing how the Lord actually um, conducted that whole, whole day for us because it, it uh, also taught us some lessons that were, I think, were very nice because we uh, <laughs> yeah, ended up actually not having our, our 